Hello out there to everyone at Mac Tuts Plus. My name is Cameron Knight, and today I'm going to be showing you a few things about your dock. As you can see, this is your dock down here in the bottom. By default, most Macs come with the dock at the bottom. And today we're going to be concentrating mainly on this part of the dock over here near your trash can. Um, you have several things over here by default, and uh, we're going to talk about putting more things there and making it so that that part of your dock is specialized to your needs. The first thing we need to do is customize our dock before we get started on anything else. If you go up here to your Apple, up here in the left-hand corner, if you click that, you'll see that dock has its own menu here. So the first thing you'll see is hiding. Right now, my dock is not hiding, so you can see that the, the option is to turn hiding on. If I click this, you'll see that my dock disappears. But if I scroll over the area down here, you'll see that my dock pops up. Hiding is just a way to keep your dock out of the way when you don't you need it and aren't using it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my hiding back off so you can see my dock all the time. The next option you'll see here is magnification. Um, my magnification is turned on, so you'll see that the option here is to turn it off. So if I turn it off, you'll see that when I scroll over the different icons down here, that nothing happens. They just stay the same size. If I go back up to the, my dock and turn magnification on, you'll see that the icons get slightly bigger when I roll over them. I don't have my magnification turned up very far, but uh, you'll get a chance to look at what it looks like um, in a bigger magnification later on. The next option that you'll see under the dock menu is the position. Um, by default, most Macs, as I said, come with the dock at the bottom, but you can position it to the left, and you can also position it to the right. Um, just depending on what types of programs you enjoy using or the things that you do for your work or your pleasure, um, you might want to just position your dock in a different place. So I'll go ahead and move that back down to the bottom. And the last thing that you'll see here is the dock preferences. These are some more specific preferences that you can also get to through system preferences. So let's go to those right now. As you'll see, it, goes, it, go, it went ahead and launched system preferences for us. You can see that down here in the corner, that's the system preferences icon that launched. So now you'll see a variety of options. The first thing is size. These are the size of the icons in your dock. So I can make these larger or I can make these smaller. You'll see that it's limited to the number of icons that you have in your dock. Because I have lots of icons in there, um, it reaches a certain point and it won't get any larger. Um, it reaches that point around here. If you have fewer icons in your dock, you can make them even larger. So I'm going to go ahead and make that a middle size for us. The next thing you'll see here is the magnification, like we talked about in the under the dock menu under the Apple. Um, you can see that it has a min-max um, option here as well. This check mark just turns it on and off like you can do under the menu. Um, but this makes it so that you can customize the amount of magnification. So if I turn this all the way up, you'll see that when I roll over an icon, it gets really, really big. So it's just an easy way to identify what you're trying to click on. If you have a lot of things in your dock and you're maybe changing out the applications that you feature in there all the time, this might be a good option for you to use. Um, I usually use mine just a little bit. Um, just makes it a little bit easier to know where my mouse is. Um, so that's just my preference there. But you can customize it to your own personal preference. The next option here is the position on screen, which we covered under the menu already. Um, but again, you can do right, left, or bottom. The next thing is minimizing windows, the minimizing windows effect. You have the genie effect and the scale effect. When you have a window open, uh, perhaps Safari, um, I have the genie option open now, which means when I minimize by either clicking the yellow icon here, or by double-clicking the, the bar across the top here, it means that it kind of sucks in and goes down into the dock. If I change this to the scale effect, you can see that if I minimize 
it kind of just shrinks instead of getting sucked down. This effect is really just a personal preference thing. If you like one or the other, go for it, but it doesn't really affect any of the operations or anything like that. It's just how the effect looks. So I'll change this back to the genie effect. So the next uh, option you see here is minimize windows into an application icon. This window, you can see my Safari window, when I minimize it, it goes into the, le the right side of my dock over here. If I ch put this option on to minimize windows into an application icon, if I minimize now, it just goes into my Safari icon down here. And then you can see that it's not over here. So in order to get it back, I will just click the Safari icon and it will come back up to normal. This is just a way to keep your dock a little bit cleaner. Um, if you know what applications are open via the dots here, the dots that are underneath each icon, then you can know, you'll know like, oh, I have a window minimized into this application. I can just get it back using that instead of piling up things over on this side of the dock. So we'll go ahead and minimize this into the application again. Turn this effect off. And you can see if I open it and then I minimize it again, it will go into that side of the dock instead of going into my application icon. The next is the animate opening applications option, which is by default check marked on most Macs. The, uh, this just means that when you open an application, your icon will bounce, as you can see with Firefox right now. So you can see it's slowly opening, and then we have the Firefox uh, application open. So I want to show you quickly a couple different ways to close an application. Um, if you click the X here up in the corner, it basically minimizes the application into the Firefox icon, with the exception that if you have a page loaded, it won't keep that page. So you're basically closing the program, but not shutting the program down. So if we do that now, you can see that the application is still open but if I click it, it will come right back up. So the ways to close the application completely out are to use the Firefox Quit menu here. So you just click on Firefox up in the left-hand corner there, and then scroll down to Quit Firefox. You can also see that the application shortcut for that is Command-Q. The other option is a dock option, which is why I'm bringing all of this up. So if this is closed out and I know I'm not going to use it again, you can do one of two things. You can either click and hold the icon, and it will bring up the option to quit, hide, or options. So I can quit the, the application that way. Or, I'll use Safari as an example for this one, I can control click the application. This will bring up a different type of menu with the same types of things in it. It just looks a little bit different. So you have a few options here. You have Keep and Dock. If you've opened an application and that doesn't already have an application shortcut in your dock, um, you can select this option and it will make sure that even after you quit the program that it stays in your dock. Uh, the other option is Open at Login, so when you fire up your computer and log into your system, um, it will fire up your uh, whatever program you've selected in with this option. And then you also have Show in Finder. When you click this, it will show the actual application file in your application's folder. So if I click this now, you can see I'm in my application's file here, and you can see the, the Safari icon here. This is the actual program. In your dock, these are all shortcuts. If you drag or, or get rid of an application in your dock, it does not delete the program. In order to delete the program, you need to come into your Applications folder and drag the application into your trash can. So we'll go ahead and close out this. But as you saw, the other option was Quit. So I can just easily quit a program from right here um, without actually opening a window or even seeing the Safari uh, toolbar at the top. So, and then we also have the final thing in the dock preferences is the automatically hide or show dock, which is what I talked about earlier. So, as I mentioned before with the dock, 
you have, these are just shortcuts. They're not anything to, uh, to worry about deleting. But if you want to get something out of your doc, the way you do that is by grabbing uh, the icon and dragging it up. So if I click and hold on the icon and then move it, not for that long, <laughs> if I click and hold on the icon and drag it up into my desktop area, you'll see the little cloud appear next to it, and I can poof the application and it disappears. That application has not been deleted from my computer. The shortcut to the application has just been removed from my dock. So that's another quick trick with the applications side of your dock. So now on to the big finale here with the right hand side of your dock. You can see that there is a small divider here um, that divides your application side of your dock from the other side of your dock. The things that come as default on this side of your dock are your downloads folder and your trash can. You can actually see visually if there is something in your trash can or not and on this side and you can also, but you can also add different things to this dock, uh, to this section of the dock. The first thing you can do is add folders. So if I go into my hard drive, I have under my, under places, I can click on my user here, which is Knight, that's my username for my computer, and I can click on documents because I have a documents folder that I've labeled docs, D-O-C-S, that I've been carrying with me from computer to computer for, for years, since I was using a PC back in the 90s. I've had this folder with all my documents in it. So if I wanted to access this folder quickly, um, this isn't a very quick way to do it, trying to find it every time. So I can drag my docs folder from where it is on my computer to this side of the dock. Make sure that it doesn't go inside one of these folders. You want it to be its own separate thing, just drop it on there. So now you can see that I have a docs folder here, and the icon will change depending on the content of the folder usually. Um, this is mostly like a, like a Word document kind of folder, so you can see that it changed to like a sheet of paper here. So if I now, if I open this up via here, if I click on it, you can see that it brings up all of my documents that are in this folder, and I can access the things inside that folder from my desktop as well, or from my doc as well. The other thing that you can see is if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see the icon open in Finder. And when you click this, it opens up the folder in its original location. So now that that's open, I want to show you that you can just remove this folder just as quickly as you added it. I can just drag it and poof it. And you can see that the Docs folder itself doesn't actually move. These are shortcuts. They're not the actual documents. So when you're moving this to your dock, it doesn't copy anything, it doesn't move anything, it just is an alias that you're adding to your dock. So you, we've looked at how to add folders. You can also see down here that I have a document called Passes. This is a document, not a folder. So you can also add individual documents to this area. Uh, this is just a place where I keep low security passwords and stuff like that. This is a password protected document that I won't open and reveal all my secrets to you. Um, but if I go here, if there's a project that I'm working on, uh, for instance, this is some stuff for my, the local university I teach at, if I'm consistently using the same document over and over again for a project, I can just move it into my doc. This is a PDF, and you can see that it just drops down there with the PDF icon so you can easily remember what it is. And then at the end of the project, I can simply drag it off and get rid of it. Um, but it's just an easy way to get directly to a document that's in an internal folder on your computer. So if you see again, I can just drag it and drop it, and then if I open it, I, I, to open it, I just click it, and it will open the Adobe Reader program that's needed, and I can access it that way. So again, I'll get rid of this. So you've seen the uh, you've seen that you can do folders, you can do individual files. The other thing that's interesting is that you can do files from your hard drives or your work servers. So if you have a server at work or even if you have a server at home, if there's any files or folders on there that you need, you can drag them into your dock and just drop them there. When those devices, the server or the hard drive, are not connected to your computer, you will still see a symbol down here. It just won't work, but it will stay there. 
So as soon as you plug your hard drive back in or, or go back to work and connect to your server, you'll immediately have access to whatever specific folders you have. This is really, really handy for that need. Um, I had a server at work that I worked for on a long time, and that, uh, that server contained a file that was just my folder where I kept all of my things. So you can add it straight to your dock, and I could get to it immediately first thing in the morning every day and it was no problem. It made it really easy to access the specific folders I needed on my work server. So I hope this helped you out. Um, I hope you have a better idea of what your dock is capable of now, and good luck with your new Mac or your old Mac, and have a great day. Thanks so much.